Hello. So welcome to today's lesson in our study of complex analysis. So today we are going to talk about the conformal mappings and we are going to give a very very brief definition and an easy to understand definition of what conformal mapping is about. Okay. So let's first take a definition. So a function this function here is called conformal if it preserves angle actually that's this is the keyword here so if it preserves angle then that is conformal all right so maybe let's say we have a particular function and maybe let's say we have a plane one we have another plane two so let's name our function maybe let's say f of w so maybe let's say in plane one the angle made was 90 degrees and in plane two so the angle made was 90 degrees right so because this particular function here even though we move from plane one to plane two the angle didn't change it was preserved then this particular function here is said to be conformal okay so that's just a very brief definition for what a conformal mapping is we are going to even support our definition with a theorem which is going to help us understand the conformal mappings better okay so the theorem says that if you have w equals f of z which is a function and if this function is analytic i hope by now you know what an analytic function is We've already discussed that in our previous videos. And the first derivative of our function is non-zero. So this point here is also very important. I want you to note that. Then F defines a conformal map. Please take very um take a critical look of the theorem because um it is very very important that is going to help a lot in understanding what you are about doing okay you are going to base on the theorem so you see that if the b equals f of z is analytic and as i said by now we should know what an analytic function is and f prime of z is non-zero then f defines a conformal map so from our theorem then it implies that f of z equals easy the exponential function is conformal everywhere since our f prime of z equals is non-zero for every number in a complex plane okay so you know with our f of z equals e of z right this particular function is analytic and also when you find the first derivative of it you are going to get the same thing Oh, by now we all know how to differentiate um, exponential functions so you realize that with this particular function here no matter the value z takes this particular function here will never be equal to zero so that means this particular function here is conformal everywhere okay based on the theorem so mostly <coughs> in what we are studying the questions which can come from conformal maps are these questions here so you can be given a set of functions and it will ask you to <coughs> determine where the particular function is conformal and where it is not okay mostly these are the examinable questions from the conformal maps in our course that we are studying so we are relating it to our course okay so the question says for the following functions we should determine where f of z is conformal and where it is not so this is our first function our second our third i think we will have a fourth one so we are coming to work on this four if you're able to understand this then you'll be able to solve every question of this nature so now let's take the questions one by one and solve them 
so solution so as i told you that the theorem was very important so before we can solve these questions and understand them very well we have to record the theorem okay so if you record that then you should be good to go so with the first question we had this to be our function all right so with this particular function you realize that when you find the first derivative of it so we have f of z equals 1 over z which is the same as z raised to the power negative 1 so finding the first um, derivative of this is going to give us so you bring this negative 1 here then times z raised to the power uh, negative 2 which is the same as negative 1 over z squared right so sorry for the mistake here so we have negative 1 over z squared so you realize that with this particular function that we've gotten from the first derivative the only point or the only value of z at which the derivative will cease to exist is when z is equal to 0 so when z is equal to 0 we're going to have negative 1 over 0 which we all know this will not exist like it won't be defined right so that means that for this particular function it is conformal everywhere except when z is equal to 0 so this is how you make the analogy it's very very simple it's just like finding where a function is defined or not but it's just that here we are focusing on the theorem with regards to the conformal maps okay so let's take a second example so actually this second example is very very similar to the first one that we solved so f of z equals 1 over z squared is the same as z exponent negative 2 so when you differentiate this the first derivative you're going to get f prime of z will be equal to so negative 2 times z raised to the power negative 2 times negative 1 which is negative 3 so it is the same as what we have here so it's correct so you realize that this one is the same thing the only value of z where the derivative is going to be undefined is when z is equal to 0 so hence we use the same explanation as we used in question 1 or the first question that the function is conformal everywhere except when z is equal to 0 okay alright so yeah, thank you for that alright so now let's take a third question okay so with a third question we have f of z equals 0 to the power 6 so I know when you find the first derivative of it, you are going to get 6z exponent 5. And you realize that with this one, there is no value of z when this particular function is going to be undefined. But when z is 0, our f prime of z will be equal to what? 0. So you can see that from the theorem here. If f of z is analytic and if f prime of z is not equal to zero, then f defines a conformal map. So from the definition here, then it means that when z is equal to zero and you put it inside this equation here, we're going to get six times zero raised to the power five, which will be equal to zero, which will make the function not conformal. Hence we have to exclude zero from the set of numbers or values which are going to make this particular function conformal so we then conclude that the function is conformal everywhere except at z equals zero so i hope you understand that all right so now um let's take a fourth example so we have f of z equals e raised to the power negative z right e negative z so you realize that when you find the first derivative of this particular function here you're going to end up with this and you know there is no value of z which is going to make this function zero 
it's just like for the so this one is the inverse exponential function so it's just like the mean exponential function so that means this particular function is going to be conformal everywhere okay all right